So in Lake Tahoe today, we are um, in the middle of a trap tag haze effort um, co in coordination with state parks, Cal State Parks. Um, it's really, really important up here that we are able to identify individual animals. This is becoming more apparent as we start to realize how many bears are actually in a small area. In our experience, they all look very, very similar. And so really, um, visually, the only way to tell them apart is by um, special markings, but also with an ear tag. The other interesting thing about tagged animals is that we are able to find out how they move across the landscape. So we've had animals in one area travel a few miles to a different area and start causing problems somewhere else. Um, and there's no other way we would know that that animal had moved like that unless we would we could identify it. So we have about 18 parks in our district. Um, we don't have bear issues in all of those parks, so the majority of our efforts for bear management is mostly along the west shore and north shore of Lake Tahoe, but we are seeing a lot more incidences down in the foothills and South Yuba area, so that is changing quite a bit. Um, but so far, yeah, we're dealing with, I'd say maybe a handful of parks, maybe five parks with bear issues. This problem in Tahoe is not, it, it, it's, it is a human food storage issue and a trash issue, um, but it is becoming more of um, bear learned behavior here. Um, these bears do not behave like normal wildland bears. They're um, used to getting food sources um, from humans um, and they're teaching their cubs to acquire food sources from humans and there's not a shortage of those food sources so we want to document what they're doing and the only way to do that is through identification. We take blood samples and hair samples and saliva samples from every bear that we immobilize and um, the DNA is uh, one to we're, we're keeping a log of the DNA um, so that if we have an incident we can acquire DNA from the incident like blood or hair um, from a broken window or um, an ice chest and we can see if we have actually um, handled that animal and identify that tag. Um, but the other thing that we're finding in our forensics lab, they are um, running those DNA samples against each other to see relatability um, because we kind of anecdotally think that, that these, a lot of these bears are interrelated and they're, you know, training their, their young to do the same behavior. But, but we don't know, we don't have proof of that unless we have DNA and re relatability. And we're also trying to, you know, haze these bears so that they'll relate the campground and people um, with a negative experience. So um, that's probably the biggest thing for state parks is we do have campers in the summer and we want to try to prevent that next generation for the next year um, from having a lot of human bear conflicts. The idea is to give them a negative experience and hopefully they learn from that experience. Um, just like if they get a food reward from getting in a vehicle, that's a positive experience. So they're going to try that again. Um, we're hoping that, that we're training them not to be around people. So the first thing that I would like visitors to know is that we do have bears in the area and we have a lot of bears in the area. Um, I think a lot of people assume that bears are nocturnal. Our bears here are active in the middle of the day and in the morning. So lock up your food and garbage at all times, day and night. Um, always store it in a bear-proof facility. Don't leave it in your vehicle, in your tent. Um, you know, lock your car doors. They're, they're really intelligent animals and so, um, and they're opportunistic. So they will try to do anything they can to get a quick calorie dense meal. We've seen an increase in bear activity um, and a bold, more boldness of behavior in these animals. Their populations are exploding up here. They're doing quite well. Um, we've trapped seven females just in this one particular area in the last one and a half weeks. And that's, that's seven females that are potentially breeding and they have two to three cubs here and that are successful. So, um, so people need to understand that, that these animals ex are existing here. Um, they are, probably mostly dependent on human foods. So food storage is very, very important.
with residents, um, we're, you know, a lot of people are having to electrify their windows and they can't open their doors and have their windows open during the summertime when it's hot. Um, they can't enjoy that. Um, we have bears jumping on picnic tables while people are picnicking. Um, and then people run off and the bears get the food reward. So these bears are super smart. They've learned how to adapt to urban living and um, they're doing quite well in it. I think everybody wants to see a bear in the wild, um, understand that they, they are wild animals. Um, they're not aggressive animals, but they are large animals that can do a lot of damage um, to property, but also um, if they feel threatened, they will hurt people. So, um, you know, keeping your distance is really important and being very diligent about food and trash storage is extremely important for people here.